Okay, in this video, we are going to balance this equation here. HClO4 plus P4O10 yields H3PO4 plus Cl2O7. And as we're balancing this thing, we're going to keep a running count of how many atoms, how many of each type of atom we have on the reactant side and the product side. So before we do any of this, what you need to do is just put a zero in front of every chemical species. So I'm going to put a zero in front of everything. So that means we have none of any of these atoms so far. Okay. Now we're going to choose an element to start with. And as in the last video, you want to start with an element that appears only once on either side of the equation. So in this equation, you could start with hydrogen, or you could start with chlorine, or you could even start with phosphorus, but don't start with oxygen because oxygen appears twice on both sides of the equation. Okay, so I'm just going to arbitrarily choose hydrogen to start with. All right, so I'm going to identify which side of the equation has the most hydrogens, and that's the right side with three. So I'm going to put a one in front of this. I'm going to give this a coefficient of one. In changing this coefficient to 1, we've now changed the number of hydrogen, phosphorus, and oxygen atoms. So I'm going to fill that out. 1 times 3 is 3 for the hydrogen. 1 times just the 1 phosphorus is just going to be 1 phosphorus. Whoops, this should be on the product side, excuse me. 1 times 4 is 4 oxygens. So putting this coefficient of 1 here, makes us have this many of these kind of atoms. So now we're going to balance hydrogen on the other side of the equation. And we're going to do that by giving this a subscript of 3 to make 3 hydrogens on the left. Note that we also changed the number of hydrogens, chlorines, and oxygens on the left side of the equation. So we have three hydrogens, we have three chlorines, and we have three times four or twelve oxygens on the reactant side. So now hydrogen is balanced. Now we can move on to another atom. Let's say we want to move on to chlorine. So again, we need to identify which side has the most chlorines. So far, that's the left side. We have three chlorines, and we don't have any on the, on the product side. So I need to find a coefficient to give this to, make this, to make three chlorines on both sides. So since there are two chlorines in each, in, in each one of these Cl2O7 molecules, I'm going to have to multiply two by something to get three. If you solve for x, you'll get x is equal to 3 halves. And you can check that if I multiply 3 halves by 2, I'll get 3 chlorines. But notice that this is a fraction. We need to change this into whole numbers, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything by the denominator, which is 2. 3 times 2, 6. 0 times 2 is just going to be 0. 1 times 2, 2. And 3 halves times 2 is just going to be 3. We're almost finished. Now we've just changed uh, all these numbers around. So if you want, we can uh, we can calculate them real quick. So let's first look at the reactant side. Looks like we have six hydrogens. We have six chlorines. We have 24 oxygens. Six times four is 24. And we don't have any phosphorus just yet. And then on the product side, we have like six hydrogens should be because we already balanced it 
six chlorines, yep, three times two is six. And then how many oxygens do we have? Okay, here's the tricky part. It looks like eight of our oxygens are coming from this one. Two times four is eight. And then 21 of the oxygens are coming from this one because it's three times seven is 21. So if we add eight oxygens plus 21 oxygens, we will get 29 oxygens. And then we have two phosphorus. Two times one is two. Hydrogen and chlorine are both balanced. The only thing that are balanced, the only things that are balanced are oxygen and phosphorus. So now we have to come up with a coefficient that, that balances both of these simultaneously. And can you see one? Can you think of one? Let's think about it for a second. We need 24, we have 24 oxygens already. We have 29 over here. So we need five. And how do we get five from 10? 10 X equals five. Looks like X is equal to one half. Same thing with the phosphorus. <clears throat> If I take one half and multiply it by four, I get two. And guess what? There's two phosphorus atoms over here. So now we have successfully balanced this equation. We have 29 oxygens and we have two phosphorus. However, we still have another fraction. We have to multiply everything by the denominator to get whole numbers. Six times two, 12. One half times two is just one. Two times two, four. And three times two is six. So there you have it. There is our balanced chemical equation. And if you want to get the number of each type of atom, you simply multiply everything in this table by two. All right, so I hope this video was helpful and good luck.